Thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Natasha Kirchuk here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. The casket of the beloved former Israeli leader Shimon Peretz has now been placed in the Knesset, where thousands of people are expected to come to pay their respects. Members of the public will be able to file past the casket as he lies in state from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., just outside of the Israeli parliament. The main thoroughfare between Tel Aviv and Jerusalem will be intermittently closed throughout today and tomorrow, as around 80 world leaders make their way from Ben Gurion Airport to Jerusalem for Paris's funeral. In the United States, President Barack Obama has ordered all White House and federal U.S. flags to be flown half-mast in honor of the elder statesman, who is considered to be the last of Israel's founding fathers. Around 80 world leaders are expected to attend former President Shimon Peres' funeral at Mount Herzl Cemetery. The beloved leader's body will be moved to the site on Friday morning at 8.30 a.m. and the official ceremony will begin at 9.30. After the eulogies, a procession will head out at 11 a.m. to the cemetery's greater leaders of the nation section, where Peres will be buried between the late Prime Ministers Yitzhak Rabin and Yitzhak Shamir. Among the leaders planning to attend the funeral are U.S. President Barack Obama, the French and British Prime Ministers, the German President and Britain's Prince Charles. Yet many Arab leaders have remained silent about Paris' death. Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas has expressed his condolences along with the President of Egypt, but the Jordanian King has remained silent. Meanwhile, Hamas is calling for a day of rage during Paris' funeral and is expressing happiness over the Israeli leader's death. Israeli security forces have arrested dozens of Palestinians in the West Bank and East Jerusalem over the past few nights in a series of raids meant to crack down on the production and distribution of illegal weapons. In total, nearly 70 people have been detained and five men have been arrested. The suspects have surrendered lots of weapons including homemade guns, rifle components, ammunition, pipe bombs and knives. In addition to the gun raids, the IDF has also allegedly arrested six members of Palestinian terror groups from Hamas and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Security officials fear the upcoming Jewish holidays could lead to increased tensions in the capital and the West Bank. The holidays are always more susceptible to spikes in Palestinian violence. It looks like it's going to be a lot harder to boycott Israeli products now that Apple is reportedly using Israeli R&D to develop the iPhone 8. Apple employees in Israel are allegedly working hard to develop the company's new products. Apple's office in Herzliya has around 800 employees and is allegedly the company's second largest research and development office in the world. An employee from that office is now claiming that the next iPhone will be called the iPhone 8 and will be significantly different from the last few iPhone models, which have been criticized for being too similar. Apple uses a Herzliya R&D center to develop hardware such as cameras, wireless technologies, and chips. That's all for now. I'm Natasha Kirchuk and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.